Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about the press and social media. Last year, President Trump said the press was truly the enemy of the people. That was true a year ago, and the situation has gotten much worse over the past 12 months. The press and social media seem to be doing everything they can to destroy America, and they're bragging about it every step of the way. We have 40 million unemployed people in the United States right now, largely due to press hysteria and misinformation. But instead of working to heal America, the press is doing everything they can to ramp up the destruction of our country. Let's take a look now at the actual data and see if America really is the evil racist country which the press and social media want everybody to believe. The Department of Justice keeps statistics on criminal victimization in America. Violent crime rates are down almost two-thirds in the United States over the last 30 years. Most of this occurred while Bill Clinton was president as he poured huge amounts of money into police departments. And at the time, he was accused of being racist for doing this. But obviously, it worked. The press and social media want people to believe that racist whites in America are killing lots of black people. But the data from the Department of Justice shows the exact opposite. Black-on-black -black violent crime is much more prevalent in the United States than white-on-black crime. And black-on-white violent crime rates in the United States are about 10 times higher than white-on-black violent crime rates. The perceptions which the press and social media want people to believe have no basis in reality. The reality is that minority gang culture in the United States is extremely violent. During May, while under lockdown, 390 people in Chicago were shot, with 77 killed. If you read through the newspaper reports, you can see that essentially all of these were due to minority gangs. Last summer, a white man in Dallas was choked to death by police officers, one of whom was black. The press doesn't want to talk about this, of course, because it destroys their story that police killings are race-based. I've had a number of horrifically awful dealings with the police myself, and I'm pretty sure that my skin is very light. The militarization of police, which occurred while Bill Clinton was president, has indeed caused a number of problems. But it has also greatly reduced the crime rate. But most of the problems with the police have nothing to do with race. Five years ago this spring, a large portion of downtown Baltimore was destroyed by rioters. The press said that an unarmed black man was killed by racist police officers. The press kept saying this for a number of days before we found out that half of the police officers involved were black. It was not a racist incident and all six officers who were charged either were acquitted or had the charges dropped. But the press succeeded in creating racial hatred which ended up destroying a large portion of the city. I was living about 10 miles away from Baltimore at the time in Columbia, Maryland. In the previous weekend, I was right at Ground Zero where the riots later started. At the time of the riots, I was the only white person living in my apartment building in Columbia. 2014-2015 was the second time I'd lived in that apartment complex. The first time was 2011-2012, and both times I lived there, I loved it. My neighbors were very friendly and people got along extremely well. Most of my neighbors had moved there to get away from Baltimore gangs. But after the Baltimore riots, the gangs started moving into Columbia. I started hearing gunshots regularly outside of my apartment, and I started getting harassed by gang members for the crime of being white. About a month after the riot, I got shot at while riding my bicycle across the street from the Black Lives Matter headquarters in Columbia. At that point, I knew I had to move. The racism and violence among those gang members became intolerable. So I moved down to Montgomery County, Maryland, which was a much safer place. While I was living in Columbia, Maryland, I was able to gather a lot of valuable information about what was going on in Baltimore. My best friend in Columbia was from the Caribbean. Here she is singing at the Assembly of God Church in Ellicott City, Maryland. She worked as a school teacher in the Baltimore Public Schools for several years. Her experiences in the Baltimore Public Schools were awful. Every single day she would get verbally abused by gang members and at times she thought she was going to be physically attacked. She constantly got called the N-word and she was told to go back to Africa, even though she'd never been to Africa. The Baltimore Public Schools had lots of money and they'd pour huge amounts of money into new equipment like laptops for the students. But when the new laptops would arrive, the students would just throw them on the floor and damage them. Eventually she had to quit her job because she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. 
The students did not want an education and they did not want her help. The reality is that Democrat-run cities are violent hellholes. Many Democratic politicians don't really care about the well-being of the black community. They just want them to keep voting for Democrats. If you want a safe and sane society, you need to be voting for Republicans. And I'm going to finish this video up with Karen singing Amazing Grace. Karen moved to the United States with nothing. She pulled herself up by her bootstraps, worked her way through graduate school, and got an education degree. She was hoping that she could help. But Democratic politicians don't want things to get better in the inner cities. Because if things did get better, people who lived there would probably start voting for Republicans, like Donald Trump. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science, propaganda, and fake news for a long time.